but I could think of a different scenario. I could think that social movement, social pressure, in combination with rational choices by investors could do the job, actually. Yeah? And the governments, in the end, will only finalize the job. Yeah? But it has to be done by different groups. So, so what I could think of is the following scenario. After Paris, there's a very strong signal. On the one hand, that all these social movements asking for decarbonization are accepted, are even are acknowledged, are even endorsed. So that's the one thing. So it strengthens the social movements. On the other hand, it's a strong signal that investing in soft coal, for example, uh, in Germany is a very bad idea. It's extremely risky uh, and you will just go out of business after 15 or 20 years. So couldn't this combination of institutional investors, uh, uh, also just uh, freelance investors, whatever, and social movements, couldn't it create a dynamics which would in the end instigate an implosion of the fossil system uh, and an implosion which would happen over the next three decades more or less. That's what we need. Uh. And actually this scenario is not likely, but it is also not impossible. Uh. It would be a scenario which would create a completely new narrative how the world is run. Uh. It was, would be run by people organized through Facebook and it would be organized through people who sit at the Wall Street uh, in their offices. Uh. And I think it's, it's a possibility. By the way, Dante Alighieri said, the hottest place in hell is reserved for those who in times of deep moral crisis stay strictly neutral. <laughs> and this is already sort of relating this to an unexpected ally, Pope Francis. Eh? So I show you the final picture here. Last November. Clearly can see the Pope, but you also see Lord Martin Rees here, <laughs> who is member of the Council of the Pontifical Academy. I'm sitting there in the second row. And this has turned into a really important academy, which is, uh, was instrumental in the production of the encyclical Laudato Si in 2015, just before the Paris conference, but also in other aspects uh, and respects. So you have many Nobel laureates where it's in a way the most distinguished academy in the world, but is also the one which is really guided by ethical principles. Eh? And so you see, if you have God on your side <laughs> and youth on your side, you can only win. Thank you very much. Yay.